Welcome back to the Pando Days 2023 premieres. I'm Eugene Shirley, co-hosting these events with Matthew Manos. Check the Pando Days 23 webpage to see the premiere week schedule for all 16 projects. Yesterday, we heard from Mount St. Mary's University about their WaterWise and Native Plant Landscape project on campus, and from the first of two USC projects this year, pilgrimage along the LA River. This morning, we're hearing from Los Angeles Trade Technical College. As a reminder, all 16 premier events are recorded. These recordings, along with all project materials, will be posted on each team's respective webpage on the Pando site throughout the month. Recordings are then judged by a distinguished panel of specialists in the first quarter of the new year. Then on April 14, we gather key people from across the whole of LA County to honor some of the best of these initiatives and help move as many of, the, as, many of them as possible forward. We call it the Pando Sustainability Awards held at Caltech. So let's dive in with LA Trade Tech. Our format is this, the team has 15 minutes for its presentation, followed by 15 minutes Q&A from our panel of experts. The Trade Tech team is led by Professor Marcella Oliva. This is the fourth season that Trade Tech from its architecture program has mounted a Pando Days project. What's so exciting about Trade Tech's submissions in the past is that they've all managed to have legs of one kind or another, all pushed forward, with next steps long after the semester classes ended in collaboration with community partners. The Trade Tech project this year is focused on shade structures, critical in a warming LA. Marcella, so wonderful to have you and your team with us. Without further ado, over to you. Good morning, welcome to Super Shade Structures and Systems. Super shade structures and systems. A spacious, pleasant shade, which neither heat can pierce nor cold invade. Super shade structures and systems. SDG County Goals 6, 7, 9, and 11. To solve climate change and urban heat islands, we are creating super shade structure and systems using digital twins and game engines to quickly visualize, accelerate, and simulate nature-based solutions, biomimicry, for water collection, solar energy, air purification, and soil restoration. Drag and drop a warehouse in virtual reality to observe its impact with precise engineering and scientific simulations. Hello, I'm Martin Gomez and I'm excited to introduce my innovative shade structure inspired by the Namib Desert Beetle. This remarkable beetle's ability to thrive in one of the driest places on earth has served as the foundation for my project. I proudly present the Fractal Pavilion, a groundbreaking shade structure that harmoniously combines the principles of biomimicry observed in the Namib Desert Beetle with the captivating elegance of fractal architecture mathematics. Hello, my name is Alexander Angulo. My shade structure is inspired by the flower of life serving as a cooling system equipped with misters attached to the ceilings to provide relief during the scorching summer months. Climate change poses a pressing challenge for our generation and according to the USGBC, those born in the last 20 years have not experienced an average temperature lower than that of the 1900s. To address this issue, I turned to the Land Art Generator where I discovered a compelling case study featuring a canopy of solar panels capable of powering up to 900 homes. Furthermore, I harnessed the creative potential of an AI image generator to produce inspiring visuals that guided the design of my structure. In the course of my research for this project, I drew inspiration from the graceful movement of a hummingbird's wings, notably the flower of life's mathematical fractal nature and the flight patterns of birds exhibiting intriguing parallels. Birds in flight demonstrate coordinated movements and patterns reminiscent of fractals mirroring the underlying harmony found in nature. Here you can observe both axonometric and top view of my project. Hi, my name is Lumen Digo, and this is my super shade structure and system called the Hermit Shelter. My design is a lightweight, hollow framed canopy that includes seating and allows for natural water collection. It comes equipped with solar panels. Much like the Hermit Crab's shell, 
My shading structure is designed for protection, not from predators, but the unrelenting elements. The Fibonacci sequence math formula enables my shading structure to effectively funnel rainwater. We urgently need a solution to excessive global warming. Hello, I'm Jose Cruz presenting my super safe structure, an essential solution for urban areas like Los Angeles, countering the urban heat island effect and preventing extreme temperatures. Not only am I aiming to lower extreme temperatures, but also strive to provide communities with a better quality of life with these structures. My design resembling an umbrella features six pointed shapes with crevices that adds a water collection function, drawing inspiration from nature's symmetrical designs found in flowers and plants. Some plants follow the epicycloid or hippocycloid sequence, a geometric pattern reflected in my work. Additionally, I was inspired by a case study biomimicry focus design from land art generator incorporating leaf-like elements. This innovative structure adapts providing shade and creating a cooling effect for people beneath it by adjusting its shades to enclose the area when occupied. My name is Jack Greenberg and this is my super shade structure for the 2023 Panda Days competition. Driven by the need to adapt to the upward trend in the extreme heat days here in Los Angeles, my proposal aims to provide solutions to address shading from the intense heat as well as mitigate water collection obtained by photovoltaic thin film and fog harvesting nets. Drawing inspiration from the mycelium of mushrooms shown on the right as well as mathematics like the catenoid model orbiting on the left. I have created a tensile structure taking inspiration from the great architect Fry Otto as well as my case study, the Denver Union Station. Here's a presentation by Jasmine Brown. She got inspired by the mathematics and the movement of mantis shrimp. Here's another proposal by Sarai, where she got inspired by the movement of plants and flowers. Hello, my name is Eduardo Cortez, with the pleasure of demonstrating my flower of web system. The idea we were challenged with is to design a super shade structure and system. In my case, a spider web inspired rain collector that has a system of mist installed in order to lower degrees Celsius and also shade urban areas that have great risk of heat islands. With this thought using biomimicry and sacred geometry, the flower of life example, my name is Jasmine Rios, and the shade structure I designed is called Accordion. This shade structure serves the purpose of providing shade to communities in outdoor spaces, mitigating health issues such as heart stroke and skin cancer. It boosts a unique feature, a water collection system integrated through a net. By collecting drops, we can provide water to communities and environment. This shade is inspired by the art of origami, and the design incorporates a movable and foldable model, enhancing its adaptability. The concept draws additional inspiration from the land art generator case study, The Living Ribbon. Nature serves as another significant muse, influencing both form and function, as embodiment of creativity and functionality. It stands as a testament to potential of integrating art and environmental consciousness in architectural endeavors. Hello, I'm Jabari Williams. I'm proposing a solar shade structure designed to cover the roofs of houses and buildings with the primary goal of cooling these spaces during hot days without relying on air conditioning. To achieve this, I drew upon mathematical principles delivered from Platonic polyhedron Archimedean solids. The structure consists of multiple polygons with identical vertices ensuring an efficient and harmonious design. Additionally, my inspiration extended to the cactus plant, its remarkable ability to conserve water in extreme heat. I've incorporated insights from the cacti and how the fibers to collect water from the air, which can be applied this context. This is a study by Justin Cortez. 
really interesting inspiration for the movement of bees as they fly. This is by Kimberly Urquia, beautiful renderings, um, inspired also by the cactus. My name is Lin Kong. My super solar structure model is inspired by the restaurant Los Menangeles, designed by architect Alex Candela, and a mathematical formula Z equals to X square minus Y square. The structure is very important during hot weather because it can hold hundreds of people during hot weather because of climate change. Also, the structure can collect massive rainwater and solar energy during various times of the day. The world is in a heat emergency and global climate crisis. Direct solar radiation has the largest impact on comfort in open spaces. Shade is effective at cooling because it protects the body from the sun's shortwave radiation, which includes ultraviolet and visible light. It also protects the body from hot surfaces and the heat they release. My name is Brianna Ramirez. The inspiration of my super shade structure proposal is influenced by plants such as a prayer plant, which open and closes like an umbrella, as well as other plants that naturally collect and retain rainwater for their consumption and the use of reproduction. The patterns these plants are able to form resemble the helicoid shape, which consists of a wide top opening. These type of openings will be incorporated on my shade structure with solar shades extending its top surroundings to provide shade while allowing filtrated water to enter the base of the structure. With the right insulated materials, the base of the super shade structure can act as a water heater shower in places such as water parks or outdoor pools or a relaxation shade structure in any outdoor open space. Hello, I am Aaron Gaska and this is my bus stop shade structure. This shade structure is to modern bus stops with a dim glass to keep out the sun with the back glass in the slope position to keep more room in. The back glass is an inspiration of London train stations where the walls are sloped to keep people awake waiting for the trains while still feeling comfort. The backdrop is also for more room with the roof to protect from the sun or the rain. If there is none in the middle of the object. Thank you for looking at my bus stop. Uh, this is a presentation by Ralph Steven Arellano, inspired by mushrooms and the conite uh, section. Hello. My name is Luis Ferriano and the name of my super shade structure is called Card Cool. To describe this proposal, this proposal provides shade for vehicles that are parked outside in hot temperatures. The nature inspiration of my proposal is the leaf. The leaf has a very interesting geometric shape which inspired me to make shade structures for vehicles. The math inspiration of my proposal is a cycloid because the cycloid inspired me to make curved shade for vehicles. The case study of my slide is called Alibaba. Alibaba is a company that makes shade structures which is mimicking the geometric shape of a leaf. Why is this why is this an urgency? This is a is an urgency because we want to find a solution for hot temperatures and climate change. Hi, my name is Tristan Panelinan. I've developed a shade structure that helps lessen the effects of the urban heat island. And what that is, is basically cities trapping hot air and creating a hotter environment. So a few things inspired the design, such as mushrooms, the structure of a flower, and the structure of a spider web. Furthermore, the geometry of the helicoid inspired a sort of curved shape. For the shading component, I went for a pentagon shape. The canopies itself would be held up by a frame constructed of recycled materials. Functional Hello, my name is Alexis Hernandez. I am an architecture student at LA Trade Tech and this is Arch 201 class. As we may all be aware of, global warming is currently affecting our way of living and it will continue to do so. The urban heat island effect continues affecting air quality, ocean life and ecosystems leading to animal extinctions and ocean acidification. 
We must find solutions as soon as possible to sustain our own health and that of our environment. For the Arch 201 class, we design functional supershade structures. And last one by Marlene. She got inspired by a pika creating all these beautiful structures. With every decade, the only planet we have is hotter, drier, and nastier due to climate change and global heating. A major growing fraction of these emissions is coming from air cooling, which means we need to find a better way to cool our indoor and outdoor spaces. That better way is super shade structures and systems, modular, scalable, multifunction, time of day weather, and seasons responsive large scale structures and systems to provide large area district cooling over towns, villages, campuses, malls, trailer parks, and other inhabited spaces, lowering the enclosed area's outdoor temperature during high heat days, while also lowering the air conditioning cooling loads of the sheltered buildings. This is climate mitigation as well as adaptation. The future of the built environment is shady. That will be a good thing. What is next? I am very excited to share that uh, we've been funded and we are going to start creating what I'm going to call instead of the metaverse, the Pandoverse, and start bringing all these solutions into a game engine so we can quickly accelerate this change. Now, why is this important? As we know, in the last 100 years, we have added 6 billion people in our planet. In the next 20 to 30 years, we're going to add another 2 billion. We have to accelerate this change. We have to become the eco-civilization that John Cobb mentioned. And we need to use these tools for a better healing plan. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for that presentation, Marcella and the Trade Tech team. I love the promise to keep us cool and to get all the ideas that you're generating into some kind of system or database or so of green solutions for the future. I think that's absolutely wonderful and love hearing about your next steps. So let's bring in our team of experts and see what they think. We'll give the next 15 minutes of Q&A over to them and to you. Uh, with us this morning are Mark Vandershaf and Jackson Castro. Mark is an urban planner from the Minneapolis-St. Paul region who has become a great specialist on sustainability planning in metropolitan Los Angeles. So much of a specialist, he's written the book, literally, on the 13 sustainability plans in the region. A few, if any, have his range of understanding of the Southland sustainability plans. By the way, his book, which is an invaluable resource, is can it can be had by going to the Pando website for more information. Joining Mark is Jackson Castro, whom you may remember from from the Harvey Mudd Pomona College Cal Poly Pomona team from last year's winning Pando Days project related to building nonprofit solar power factories across the the county. Jackson was team lead. He is now pursuing a career in the solar industry and living in Austin, Texas. Mark and Jackson, thank you both so much for being with us today. Mark, let's start with you. As a planner of national renown with a focus on sustainability, issues of heat and shade have always been much on your mind. What is What was going through your mind this morning as you're listening to the Trade Tech presentation? Yeah, thank you, uh, Eugene, and thank you, everyone. Uh, first, what was going through my mind was what a wonderful set of ideas has been presented here. I love the looks of every one of them. Uh, I love the promise that uh, I read about and that many of you spoke to, the uh, ability, I'm just quoting here, uh, to observe impact with precise engineering and scientific simulations. Uh, that excites me because, um, you know, sometimes it's easy to come up with something that looks beautiful, but to be able to translate that effectively into the real world is, is much more challenging. So, you know, kudos for being able to uh, incorporate both of those into your concept. Um, the other thing that I'll, 
I'll just say by way of introduction and then translate that into a question. Um, you know, one of the things that fascinates me about sustainability planning is the the breaking down of silos that's starting to occur there. Um, you know, it used to be that transportation planners just plan for transportation. Uh, water planners uh, plan for their own kind of water, <laughs> whether it was wastewater or uh, groundwater or or uh, surface water. Those were all in their silos as well. Uh, but in all of those arenas, there's a lot of a of a effort to integrate. And so um, I especially was uh, eager to see uh, so many of the uh, presentations mention the uh, that it would provide the function of water collection as well as shade protection. And so I guess the question I would be interested in, in hearing more about, um, you know, what are you conceiving or how will you approach the issue of what becomes of this water once it is collected? And how can we ensure that it ends up in the most beneficial place? I noted, you know, the one uh, mention of providing showers for people uh, in, a, in a kind of park-like area. Uh, but I'm curious what else has been thought of and how you might approach that issue. Uh, thank you, Mark. You're so on target. And I think that's what exactly we're going to focus for our next steps, because this is not going to be a game. These are actually... Um, real real proposals um very fortunate to be working with a very complex uh interagency uh caltrans department of sanitation multiple um uh, council members uh districts because these solutions that we need to integrate it affects every single uh agency i'm very excited to see at a federal level i'll share with you for the very first time we're beginning to see the community in the middle and then 12 different agencies of how we are gonna improve the living conditions of our communities. And um, I'm very excited to begin to see this from government agency, private agencies, nonprofit organizations. And that's exactly the, the next step, yeah, precisely for water, because you can create these systems, but if it's not connected to the watershed, if it's not connected to the existing water systems, um, it's not gonna work. And we need right. these technologies. We do need the digital twins. We need geospatial repository. We need gamification. And that's what these tools are gonna help us. The AI, so we can uh, quickly say people, places, projects, and most efficiently, because um, we're running out of time. Jackson, okay. let's go ahead. And, yeah, Jackson, let's go ahead and bring you in on the conversation. And then it, it'll open up as a conversation among you all. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you so much for having me. Um, first of all, the, the presentation was lovely. Uh, like Mark said, it's really just inspiring to see all these different uh, aspects of the projects kind of come together from places that you might not expect. Um, and even seeing some like similarities in some cases, and even how then the, the idea comes out very different, even with like the same inspiration. And I think it's, it's always really cool to see a lot of that come from nature itself. And so, first of all, I just like to say it was really exciting to see all of these different proposals. Um, and then I'd also like to kind of piggyback off of Mark to say that I agree. I think it's really, it's amazing to see how many of these different proposals are incorporating all these different, different ideas between just like shade, water collection, maybe throwing in a little bit of solar power because it is that like, that's, like y'all said, that that's what we need. It can't be everyone focusing on their one little thing. We have to be able to incorporate it all together in order to actually make any effective effort towards these solutions. Uh, and so kind of on that note, I have two, two quick questions. One is much more just like, I'm curious about the process, um, which is uh, in using some of these uh, AI inspired images and stuff like that. I'm, I'm really curious, especially with the projects that used similar inspiration, how consistent was the the image that was being produced? Like I'm, I'm sure it was the prompts were put in maybe a couple times or a couple images were produced. I'm just curious how consistent uh, it was in producing something similar um, when making those models. And then my second question is, 
uh, similar to Mark looking at this from my focus of, of solar and how that works. I'm curious if there's been, and you answered this a little already with the, you know, the need for the technology to be there, but has there been any consideration into the types of solar that would maybe be necessary on some of these more curved structures and which ones might actually be able to accommodate cur certain or current commercial uh, solar panels? Brilliant question. Brilliant question. We put a lot of thought. This is the first time we're using AI for image and also for word manipulation. And on purpose, where we brought it into the curriculum, uh, we put it a lot of thought. And um, we feel very proud of this curriculum. Most of these students, I have to tell you, is quite incredible that in 13 weeks, they learned the software, they learned the concept, they generated an amazing solution. And I think it's because we're using a lot of the wisdom from nature. Notice how they all had to at least touch mathematics and the mathematics that come from nature and then the inspiration from nature. And then all of that help us to create the prompts. So I think AI is intelligent as long as the person that is asking the question is intelligent. So I think we create, we built a lot of intelligence and I think we were very excited with, with the results because we put a lot of thought about it. So I appreciate your question. Um, the, that's those realities, right? Like how can we make more people participate and have meaning and purpose and producing something so beautiful all we need to start thinking is aligning ourselves to nature's grids, patterns, and mathematics. So um, that's, that's, you hit, I think that's why you, I'm shocked as a teacher, how amazing the outcomes, right? So shocked, um, how beautiful they are. When I was going, this could easily be the result of a thesis uh, because they're deep. I mean, we only have one minute, but you're welcome to come. All of these students went deep into their investigations with nature and mathematics and learning the software. Um, it's quite incredible how quickly we could produce solutions. So I believe higher education has really the possibility of creating a quick implementation because we're wasting energy, but we're wasting human mind. And I think this, this solution proves that it, it, it could be done. So thank you, Jackson. Mark, come back in. Yeah, there, there must be some additional questions going around in your mind. Oh my goodness, yes, or comments. <laughs> uh, I'll start off with a little bit of a. I have a little bit of a hobby horse of my own right now, and that's that. Of the thirteen plans that I studied in in the book that Eugene mentioned, uh, the one that actually excited me the most is the city of Los Angeles working on biodiversity uh, measurements within the city and really advancing possibly to being the best way of measuring biodiversity of any city or metro area in the world. Uh, they built this off of a Singapore index that was regarded as the gold standard. Uh, but the Los Angeles people said, look, you know, we're, we have a lot of microclimates in our city. Uh, we have elevation ranging from zero to 5,000 feet above sea level. Uh, we have, they actually identified 27 different ecotopes. Uh, that was the term for the, the biodiversity microclimates. Um, I would love to see as, as time goes by, and uh, certainly by the time of the 2028 Summer Olympics, uh, a real rising of ecotope consciousness within the city and within the region. So uh, wouldn't it be great if the structures that you folks are imagining and hoping to bring into being are more uh, designed to uh, align with the ecotope where they're located? So that's a kind of a comment and a question. I don't know what the question is. I guess the question is, could that be done? And how would you uh, go about doing that? Mark, I'm so excited. That's exactly what this funding will focus. How can you do restoration? So as we create this network, because we also have other proposals that we've done with Pando, but that's exactly the next step. We're very close with Andy Schreider, who was a main yeah. player driver. <laughs> He's one of our advisors. And that's the idea that what is the effect, like the mycelium, like the roots of the Pando, 
once you do these, I call it urban interventions, mm -hmm. how is that going to elevate the living conditions and also help us restore and help yeah. us align to nature? So we don't know the answer. I hope that you guys can all help me because Mark, you said it perfectly. That's exactly, we want to make it, we have an index model. We also have a tensegrity model of how to yeah. see what is the balance of that community, of that neighborhood, the 15 minute walk. And as you do these urban interventions, how can that start restoring socioeconomics, mental health, food, security, green spaces. And uh, that's exactly what we're gonna start at least. It's like a big window and it's so big and so overwhelming, but these tools allow us to do this. We have now tools with apps inside the game engine, and it just happens to be called game engine, but for the first time we can bring architecture engineering models into the game engine so you can start simulating energy, water, relation AI, show me the best space, show me the people, show me what needs to be restored, what is the biggest urgency, and it can compute. And then through green space makers, we can produce design by local talent, with the network of yes. our, pando, our Pandoverse instead of the Ecoverse, the Pandoverse. <laughs> I love that too. <laughs> Jackson, yeah, well, any, or yeah, Mark, Jackson, either one of you, we're, we only have a couple more minutes here. Uh, any additional thoughts well, I'll just, either? I'll just defer to Jackson, but you know, I can see several hours worth of really productive conversation coming out of this. So <laughs> I'm eager to keep uh, keep in the loop on it. Jackson. <laughs> yeah, likewise, I think I mean, you could talk about this for so long just because the inspiration is so diverse and unique. But I think, again, to Mark's point, the timing of it is perfect, um, especially with, as he mentioned, like the Summer Olympics coming, there's going to be a big spotlight on LA soon. Um, not that there isn't already, but even more so like to the world. And so being able to have this project and have it visible is just really, it would be really cool. And it would hopefully even, you know, bring more success to it, bring more visibility to it. And it's just really exciting to see, again, the kind of work coming out of the LA area. Um, it's, it's really exciting. Okay, well, thank you both so much for your insights and comments. Oh, Marcella, yeah, go ahead. I just really don't want to go without saying that without the UG team, Lynn, Betsy, and getting to know who was going to be as our panelist, um, this project was a truly synergy and catalyst that we could have never done this without Pando and your team. Um, extremely important. And I just really want to thank Lynn and your team for um, for producing this platform, kind of like I see it as a petri dish. So you created all the chemicals so we could grow. So I uh, just wanted to make sure I say thank you to your team. Well, thank you so much for that. And, uh, and thank you and to your team uh, for the extraordinary work you're doing. Uh, both in its detail and the way it all comes together. And I was I was struck by just how beautiful all this is. So many times there are solutions that are not that can be good solutions but aren't necessarily beautiful. <laughs> but these are these are beautiful solutions. That's it for today. At this point in the premier schedule, we've seen nine of 16 projects developed for the 2023 Panda Day season. We have seven more to go. Next up, join us later this morning at 11 o'clock for USC. It's second of two Pando Days projects this year. Thank you so much again to our expert panel and to all the Pando Days colleges and universities that have dedicated full courses, studios, or labs to help LA County meet its sustainability goals. Pando Days was conceived in collaboration with LA's Chief Sustainability Officer Task Force and is in partnership with the county's Chief Sustainability Office. Pando Days is made possible by the support of our sponsors and by generous contributions from individuals across the Southland and beyond. Thank you for joining with us and enjoy your day. Stay in the shade.